Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good day, depending on when you are watching me. Welcome to Wake Up With Joy. We're just so excited to be with you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are so glad in it. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, it is he who is God, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, we enter into his gates, how? With thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We are so thankful to him and we bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord God, we are yours today and forever. Whatever you will for us, we accept cheerfully and obediently. Teach us your wisdom, discretion, and sound judgment for everything that we think, say, and do today. Help us to walk in the light of your word and give no place to darkness at all. Help us to be a good steward of our time and of the gifts and calling upon our lives, that we may be a blessing to all families and nations of the earth. Help us to win souls, make disciples, and expand your kingdom today. Help us to stay strong in faith, giving glory to God. Help us stay fully persuaded that you will perform what you have promised. Help us to manifest the eternal life that dwells within us. Help us to stay totally alive to God and dead to sin. As Jesus is, help us to be his ambassador in this world with his spirit, his mind, his body, his faith, his healing, his miracles, his deliverance, and his reconciliation. Help us to let your righteousness reign unto eternal life. Help us to always love, always forgive, and always bless. Help us to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Help us to always do those things that please you and help us to finish your work in the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Let's jump right into today's reading. We're on August the 4th. This is Jeremiah, the 46th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Hallelujah. And it says, this is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet concerning the nations. This is the message against the army of Pharaoh, Necho, king of Egypt, which was defeated at Carchemish on the Euphrates River by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare your shields, both large and small, and march out for battle. Harness the horses, mount the steeds, take your positions with helmets on, polish your spears, put on your armor. What do I see? They are terrified. They are retreating. Their warriors are defeated. They flee in haste without looking back. And there is terror on every side, declares the Lord. The swift cannot flee, nor the strong escape. In the north by the Euphrates, by the river Euphrates, they stumble and fall. Who is this that rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters? Egypt rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters. She says, I will rise and cover the earth. I will destroy cities and their people. Charge, O horses. Drive furiously, O charioteers. March on, O warriors. Men of Cush and Put who carry shields. Men of Lydia who draw the bow. But that day belongs to the Lord, the Lord Almighty, a day of vengeance for vengeance on his foes. The sword will devour till it is satisfied, till it has quenched its thirst with blood. For the Lord, the Lord Almighty will offer sacrifice in the land of the north by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and get balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. But you multiply remedies in vain. There is no healing for you. The nations will hear of your shame. Your cries will fill the earth. One warrior will stumble over another. Both will fall down together. This is the message the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to attack Egypt. Announce this in Egypt and proclaim it in Migdal. Proclaim it also in Memphis and Taphanes. Take your positions and get ready, for the sword devours those around you. Why will your warriors be laid low? They cannot stand, for the Lord will push them down. They will stumble repeatedly. They will fall over each other. They will say, get up, let us go back to our own people and our native lands, away from the sword of the oppressor. They, then, there they will exclaim, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is only a loud noise. He has missed his opportunity. As surely as I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty, one will come who is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea. Pack your belongings for exile you who live in Egypt, for Memphis will be laid waste and lie in ruins without inhabitant. Egypt is a beautiful heifer, but a gadfly is coming against her from the north. The mercenaries in her ranks are like fattened calves. They too will turn and flee together. They will not stand their ground for the day of disaster is coming for them, for them, for the time for them to be punished. Egypt will hiss like a fleeing serpent. 
as the enemy advances in force. They will come against her with axes, like men who cut down trees. They will chop down her forest, declares the Lord. Dense though it be, they are more numerous than locusts. They cannot be counted. The daughter of Egypt will be put to shame, handed over to the people of the north. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, I'm about to bring punishment on Ammon, God of Thebes, on Pharaoh, on Egypt, and her God, and her kings, and on those who rely on Pharaoh. I will hand them down to those who seek their lives, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Later, however, Egypt will be inhabited as it as in times past, declares the Lord. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, O Israel. I will surely save you out of, out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, for I am with you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. This is what the Lord says. See how the waters are rising in the north? They will become an overflowing torrent. They will overflow the land and everything in it, the towns and those who live in them. The people will cry out. All who dwell in the land will wail. At the sound of the hoofs of galloping steeds, at the noise of enemy chariots and the rumble of their wheels, fathers will not turn to help their children. Their hands will hang limp. For the day has come to destroy all the Philistines and to cut off all survivors who could help Tyre and Sidon. The Lord is about to destroy the Philistines, the remnant from the coast of Kaphtor. Gaza will shave her head in mourning. Ashkelon will be silence, O remnant on the pain. How long will you cut yourselves? Ah, sword of the Lord, you cry. How long till you rest? Return to your scabbard. Cease and be still. But how can it rest when the Lord has commanded it, when he has ordered it to attack Ashkelon and the coast? Okay, that concludes today's reading. So what do we see here? We see here that um, we're... Um, we're still in Jeremiah's prophetic ministry and it's going out not only to Israel, but also to the foreign nations, which have, uh, which has suppressed um, Judah. And we find that Egypt is the most recent threat that they are having, um, but is now in its, uh, so, but now because of what Egypt has done to Judah, they're now getting ready to reap what they have sown. So Jeremiah is here, he's warning Egypt um, as well as the Philistines. And uh, Egypt is going to be the last person who gets, that we're going to see right now that is going to reap what they have sown because of what they did to Judah. So this is, this is what this message is about. So Jeremiah is specifically not only talking to, to, to Judah, but reassuring them, but he's talking to Egypt and he's telling them what's going to happen and that Babylon is going to come in and, and, and get Egypt. OK, so Babylon is getting ready to you know rise up now in the midst of all of this. This is the thing. God reassures his people. He reassures us. So even though in the midst of things that we're going through, where we have reaped, this is a key, where we have reaped something that we've sown. Because, you know, it's Judah, do they deserve this punishment? Sure they do. They've been going back and forth. They have neglected God. They have not, uh, they have worshiped the other gods. They have not uh, served God and kept his, kept his laws. Um, they've just been a very, very fickle people and an unreliable people. So the thing, so this, this going into captivity is as a result of their own behavior, right? But even in the midst of that, they're still God's people and he reassures them. That should be encouraging to us because we don't always get it right. And some of the things we are going through and that we are experiencing is a result of our disobedience, our failure to heed the voice of the Lord, our failure to practice certain principles, right? So some of the, sometimes the things that we're going through are things of our own making. 
Okay. And as a result, we feel we sometimes we internalize that there's this shame, there's this guilt. We think we're not deserving of certain things. And so we don't have this expectation. And then we go into all of this where God doesn't love me or I shouldn't be loved because of what I did. But no, 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 no. Thank God for his grace and his mercy, his love. Okay, and he shows this towards Judah. In the same way he shows it towards Judah, he constantly will show it towards you and towards me. He says here, do not fear, O Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, O Israel. So I can put my name there. Do not fear, Joy, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Joy. He says, I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. So he said, don't, don't be in fear. Don't be dismayed. He says, I'm going to save you. So even though you're in this situation and you created it, I'm still going to save you. He said, not only you, but also your descendants. He says, joy will again have peace and security and no one will make, make her afraid. Look how I'm putting my name there. Instead of Jacob, I'm saying joy. Talk to yourself this morning with these scriptures. Do not fear, O Jacob, um, my servant, for I am with you, declares the Lord. I can say, do not fear joy. My servant, for I am with you, declares the Lord. He says, though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. So even though everything around you is being destroyed, is going downhill, I will not destroy you, Joy. I will discipline you, but only with justice. So yes, do I need to be tightened up? Yes, do, are there certain things that I need to get right? And, to, and, to, and that need to be tweaked? Yes, but it'll only be done in a just way. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. So there are things that, I'll, that I'll, I'll deal with because of my own consequences, but the bottom line is God is with me. I'll be successful. So just go through with grace. Stop beating yourself up. Know that God is with you, that you will not be completely destroyed, even though other things aren't going well around you, that you will have peace. He says, you will again have peace and security. I will not make you afraid. I will have peace and security. I will not be afraid. Isn't that an encouraging word this morning? Amen, amen, amen. All righty. I hope it encouraged you like it encouraged me. Amen. Let's say our confession. Today is my best day. Today is a perfect day. I decree that today and all the days of my life, that I am operating at my best, that I am bearing much fruit, that I am flowing with and following the direction of the Holy Ghost. I'm strong in my body, energized and refreshed. I'm strong in my soul, alert, vibrant and discerning. I am strong in my spirit, acting in wisdom and revelation. I plan my way and God directs my steps. I maximize my time and resources. I am purpose driven and I bring every project to its prosperous conclusion. My attitude is triumphant. My appearance is impeccable. My manner is cultured. I have a godly heritage. I am from good blood. My victory is apparent to all, for God's word is my constant meditation, and my daily fellowship is with my Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Join me tomorrow for more Wake Up With Joy, and remember to let the word light the way. Have a great day. Bye.
Just 